Hi, welcome back all of you. Nana here. And then we are with the next day's program on this uh, fusion uh, procurement implementation. Fine, go there. I will not share my screen. So yesterday we are now seen about the supplier creation actually. And then uh, we are now gone there. And then uh, we are now created a new supplier. And then we also tested the, uh, what's called your uh, accounts also. The accounts also has been tested. Now I click on it. And then now today, what happens? We are going to go there. I click on it. We will now go there. And then create a purchase order. If I click on it. We go there and then we are going to get a purchase order. So before you get the purchase order, we have to set up the receiving parameter of the organization. Fine, go there, click on it. No, go there. So click on setup and maintenance, and then we'll now set up the receiving parameter of the org. Click on it. Click on search. No, I click on search. Manage receiving parameters. Manage percentage fine. Receiving percentage fine. Parameter percentage. Mm -hmm. So we go to the manage receiving parameter and then go to the place and then we'll now set it up. Is that P011? Is the one? Fine, click on OK. Now setting it up. So we're going to set up now. So here uh, we are in P011 org, and then all the mandatory fields have been set now. Right? Like the result days exceptions is done, over result is done, result routing is there, what happens? Standard result routing. And then the result number is going to begin at 1001, automatic numeric, and then the, the, the RMA will come a bit later, actually. Mm -hmm. And then this side will now complete a bit later, actually. So the receiving parameter has been set, all the mandatory fields are set with the value. That is very, very important. Whichever is a star is a mandatory field. So there has been set fine if I cancel. Now we'll now go there and then create a purchase order. Now, right? click on it. now go there. So that is having a standard receipt routing and that will now default onto the PO. Fine, click on it. And then I will now go to the purchasing. I will now go to the procurement. And then here, what happens? I go to the purchase orders. Now I go to the purchase orders straight away. And then I'm going to get a purchase order first. So click on it. And then before we go, what happens? We must be able to see the what's called your uh, uh, your inventory thing. Fine, click on it. We'll now go to the squad, supply chain execution. We'll now go to the supply chain execution. Supply chain execution. And then I go to the inventory management. And then you must be able to see your org P011R on the left hand side top. You must be able to see it now. Click on it. So inventory management is now coming in a new form. Now fine, click on it. So I will now click on the home now. Fine. So I want to have the older one actually. Fine. I want to have the older one. Then click on it. I will now go to the supply chain execution. Fine. This is the inventory new now. Fine. I will now go to the older one. Fine. This will be coming very soon about an hour. Yes, time. The new one is going to come. We will now look at the older one now. Fine. Inventory management old actually. If you click on it, you can now see the R coming up on the left hand side actually. And the R is coming up. So click on it. I will now go to what? Item quantities. Manage item quantities. And then let me query the item. Fine. This is the first item I'm going to query. So go there. Is a P011. P01. And then give it a 01. So P0101 I'm going to query. Fine. Go there. So item starts with what? P01. And then make a search. Now I click on search. You can now see this is the first item. I will now choose the first item. So P01 first item, I'm going to choose now. It's only P01 first item. So if you make a search, there won't be any stock at all. There is no stock. Now we will now make a purchase order on a supplier. And then he's going to supply it now. Right? I will now go to the top. Right click and then duplicate. I'm going to duplicate it now. Right click and then duplicate. Now you're duplicating it. And then here, what happens? You go there in the screen. What happens? You long go there and then make a purchase order. You go to the procurement and then I go to the purchase orders. Fine, click on the purchase orders. So go there. And then I'm going to create a new purchase order on this. Now click on it. We will now create a purchase order. So click on the create order. We are now creating a new purchase order for this. <clears throat> go there. So it's a P01 business unit. The requisitioning and procurement business unit is coming. The type is a purchase order. Supplier is what? P01. If you go on and do it, what will be getting three and four actually. So the four was a prospective supplier, which we have converted into a what uh, uh, spend operation. We created the sub as a prospective supplier, and then later on, we converted them into spent authorization. Now, we'll now go to three only. The supplier site will be coming, supplier contract is coming, the default ship tool is coming, fine, well, everything is coming, click on create, we are now creating a purchase order. So click on the create purchase order. So now, what happens, it will be creating a purchase order. So we have a running number starting in 2000 now. So that number will also be coming on the top. So yesterday, we tested on one. So we have already created 2001. Probably this purchase order will be 2000. Okay, 2000 was created. Now it is 2001 actually. It's a 2001. So we are given everything up. I go there. So I will not say description. I will not say first PO. Some description I'm giving it. Uh, what know. In the bottom, what happens? You go there. The built location and shift location are coming automatically. If I go there, click on it. In the lines area, click on plus. And then I will not go and then put my first item over here. Now I click on it. I will not populate my first item over here. I will not say is what you click on it. It's a P01 underscore F1. Then give it app. So the first item will be coming up. A given name of it as a first item. So we are not giving a tap. So automatically what happens? The item will be fixed from the master arc or the child arc actually. From the child arc, you know, coming. So I will not go for 100 quantities. 
So it's not done automatically and quantities may go there. So I will now, after having filled up the main region, what happens is the location is also coming and go there. I will now go to the schedules, and click on the schedules. In the schedules, what I do is I will now change the result routing now and select it. So I have now gone to the schedules region, select the line and then click on date. You're going to edit. So click on date. And then we are going to make a change the result routing to direct actually. So, direct. so go there. Result routing will be direct. So once when you make a result to the gate, it will be delivered into the inventory also. The result routing is direct. So click on it and then go there. So click on OK now. Result routing is going to be direct actually. Result routing is direct. So click on OK. Mm -hmm. So click on OK. So 2001 PO is now fully ready. Fine, give us save. And then we will now go on and validate the PO whether it is now OK or not from the charge account, from the accrual account, and then the variance account. When everything is OK or not, we will now make a check. Command. What are the actions? And then go to validate. We are now going to validate. So once when you validate it, what happens? It will be, what happens? It will be getting validated actually. Hmm. So go there. You must enter a requested date or promised date. So one of the date is a mandatory one. So that is why it's now giving error actually. Now go there. So when we want it is a must actually. Go around. And then go there. In the schedules, what happens? One of the date is a mandatory fine. Go there. Click on it. I will not say when I want it, I want it today itself. So you can put that into the data fine. Go there. Come on. And then click on save and then we are going to submit. So click on submit. So by which what happens? You go to that and then what happens? You go to the manage approvals and then see whether it is automatic approval or not. Because we are now set up yesterday automatic, but somebody might have changed it actually. Because many people are working on this instance, and so they might have changed it actually. If I go that account, it is only application developer. Application developer is automatic only. If I click on submit, where which order is now getting submitted. So, go that account. So, the document was submitted for approval now. If I go that 2001 is now submitted for approval. You go there and then go and then manage it. Now, if I go, to, go to the manage orders and then we are going to manage it. Now. So, manage orders. So, 2001 is the order number. So put the order number. The buyer is okay, fine. We are only the buyer actually, fine. You can otherwise you can remove and then check. Fine. When you are making a search on the manage orders, always keep the other fields blank. Actually, that is the best one now. Give only minimal parameters on this. No, fine. Make a search. Fine. Have a habit of giving only minimal parameters and making search. Fine. Now what happens? No pending approval. If you click on the hyperlink on the pending approval, it will now say what is the progress which is now happening. It is now saying available, not available, and don't take some time actually. Go there and then make a search again. Even though it is automatic, fine. it is not exactly triggering the automatic approval. Fine, click on the pending. At least, you know, one of the in fact, click on it. So, click on the hyperlink again. Now, fine, click on it. Now, go there. Now, something is happening. So, that's why it's not coming as a blank one. Now, fine, click on it. Uh, now, close it. And then again, make a search. Now, fine, click on search. Now, what happens is open, actually. So, if it is open, then what happens? It won't show you with whom it is there, actually. It's now open. Fine, go there. Click on it. It will not show anything at all. I think it's shown. So if you click on the if you click on the open and then click on the submit, it will now say who are all the people who uh, approved it. You click on the submit. You click on the open and click on the submit. Now application developer has approved it and then task has got completed. Fantastic. Click on that. Now what happens? We go there and then in the manage item boundaries, we are going to make a result now. Fine. Click on that. We will now make a, what happens a gate result actually. We are now going to make a gate result. Now click on that now. And then go there. And then we will now make a gate result of it. Fine. Click on it. Click on the task list, fine, go there. Drop down and then go to the results area. There are five regions of that. So from that, from the inventory, we are now going into the results area. And go to the results area, fine, go there. Now, what happens? We go there. I will know what happens. Receive expected shipments from 2001 P1. Fine, click on the receive expected shipments. And then ensure that you now it's not showing you inventory or all. Now. That means what? We don't have what happens, uh, the requisite power to receive it, actually. So for which, what happens? Uh, since I am working on what uh, my own thing, fine, you have to have what? The inventory manager role being associated. Otherwise, what happens? Your organization will not be. Click on that now, fine. For that, click on that. And then what happens? I will now have to add my inventory manager's power now. Fine, click on that. Now go there. So I might have added the role actually, but I have not given the data access. Fine, click on it. I might have added the role. Fine, go there. I will not give the data access for me all. Fine, click on the setup and maintenance. I will not give the data access for me all. Fine, click on it. Now go there. Click on it. And then click on search now, fine. We will not give a data power. Fine, manage, fine, personage. Data personage, fine. Access personage. So manage data access for users is the one. Fine, go there. Click on the hyperlink of it. And that will not give a data access. Fine, click on plus, no fine. We are going to give a data access for this. It's a P01, EMP1 is the one. Fine, go there. Go the role is what? Inventory manager. So inventory manager. Fine, go there. We already given the role. Fine, only the data access is missing. Now, fine, click on it. The P011. We are giving it. Fine, click on save and close. So the data access is given. Fine. We will not see whether it is coming or not. Fine, click on the home icon. So click on the home icon. So, and then here, what happens? You go to the, what's called again, what happens? You go to the supply chain execution. Now, if I click on supply chain execution, you go to the supply chain execution. 
and then you go to the what's called inventory management the older one click on inventory management older one and then go there and then click on this now and click on it and then here what happens you go to the receipts and then click on the receive expected shipments your p011 r has to come now fine it is not coming and fine even though it is not showing you fine in the right hand side top it is not coming we will not try to query on the purchase order number fine 2001 and then give it up wait is not coming at all fine it is not sensing at all because the org is not visible at all fine on the p01 org is not visible so what we do is we simply log out and log in so even though we have given a data access it is not visible on the top it has to be in the visible on the top that is why the 2001 pivo is not visible now if i click on now and then we will not log out and log. so in such cases what i want to do it i will not close the tab region we will not go there click on it <coughs> we will not give what sign out and sign in now for the changes to take place we have to give a sign out and sign out if it is still not visible you have to run a ldap the ldap is a concurrent error now it is still not visible what you have to do is you have to run a ldap now go there i will not go to what <coughs> i will not Go to supply chain execution now. Find supply chain execution, and then here what I want to go to the inventory management, and then if it is still not visible, run a LDAP action. Click on it, and then along with the drop down, and then go to the receipts now. Find click on the receipts, and then here what I want to go there. So receive expected shipments, and then right hand side top, the organization has to come, and it is still not coming. <clears throat> so <clears throat> only when it comes, what happens? It will be visible now. Find if some takes, so go there, click on it, then now run the LDAP. Go to the tools now. Find go to the tools. Go to the tools, and then here, what I go there, and then here, what happens? You go and run the LDAP. Now, fine. Go to the schedule process, and then we are now running LDAP actually. Because some changes, some setup changes are not. What happens? You run the LDAP. LDAP will now sync all your setups into the transactional systems actually. Retrieve LDAP. In reality, it is not required because uh, it will now have an inbuilt syncing mechanism. Maybe around one or two hours, it will now sync everything. All the servers will be syncing. But since we don't, we want immediate results now, fine. <clears throat> Like a two-minute noodle, so what happens? You are now forcibly syncing it actually. It's now blocked actually. Fine, that is all. Now in the meantime, what happens? I will now uh, import user role because not made any changes on the what's called security console. No need to run. So now, sir, what do you do? sir, I have a question. Tell me. Tell me. Tell me. Uh, mm -hmm. Sir. We are trying to create uh, this type of uh, LDAP scheduled. Mm -hmm. uh, then first, uh, I created a schedule, and then Nikhil start uh, creating schedules. And, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, it will be blocked because this is, only one can run actually. Uh, so once when uh, Nikhil's is completed, then it will not start to run. Don't worry about it. Fine. It has got an inbuilt mechanism about okay. uh, blocking only one can run. Fine. If one is running, the other one will be blocked actually. Only one yes, sir, can when, run. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When I created, it is working uh, working correctly. And then uh, after that, Nikhil is uh, created a schedule. Then it is showing like same. It is blocked actually because some Ramba or some Urozi or Menaga might have also run it actually. Right? So we don't know how many people are running it actually right? because this instance the global instance. Okay, sir, okay. So if somebody else is also running, what happens? It will be getting blocked actually. That is the problem. Okay. So it doesn't. You don't worry okay, about it. Right? It will not take its own time and then do it. So okay, let it now get it run. And then what happens? We'll not go to the next topic, and then we'll not come back to this topic. Now go there. Now what happens? I will now uh, make a duplicate of this order. Now. I click on it. I will not go there. I will not make a duplicate of this order. I will not make a duplicate of this order. I go to, I go to the procurement. Now. I click on the procurement. I go to the procurement. Now. I go to the procurement, and then here I will not make another purchase order. So I am going to make a duplicate of this. Now. I will not first of all go to the manage orders and then query. I click on it. I will not go to what manage orders, and then let me query the two thousand one. Mm -hmm. What number is what? Two thousand one. Two thousand one, and then make a search. It will be showing on us. So I will not duplicate this order. Actually, is already open. Open means what? It is eligible for a transaction. <coughs> Requisitions will come as an approved one, whereas purchase orders will come as an open. Right? Select it, and then you go to actions, and then here order will duplicate. So duplicate is a repeat purchase order. Right? Click on duplicate. You are not repeating it. Actually, <coughs> we are now repeating it. Fine. Two thousand two will be created. <coughs> So we are now repeating the purchase order. Fine. For the same supplier, we are now repeating the order. On the supplier three, we are now repeating the order actually. So the new supply, new purchase order will be created now. They're now getting created now. So once when the creation is complete, well, what happens? We'll now get it up and right. So the 2002 is now getting ready now. Fine. Go, there. Go to actions and then bring it to where what happens? Uh, you validate it, fine. Click on validate. So validation will not be having any problem at all. Always validate and then submit for approval. And then go to the manage approvals and ensure that it is automatic approval only. Because somebody might have filled around on the approvals. And so before you submit for approval, what happens? Always make a check whether it is automatic or not. So go there. It is automatic only. Fine, go there. So click on submit. Application development means it's automatic. Fine. 2002 is not submitted. 
So go ahead and click on that. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a change now. So for change, what happens? I'm going to introduce a, what happens? Approver now. Fine, right click and then duplicate. So we are going to introduce approver for a change on the PU actually. It is called change order approver. <clears throat> I will not create what I'm going to do. One more thing. I'm not going to go there. I'm not going to introduce a change order approver actually. So you click on it and then here what happens? You go to the setup and maintenance and then we are going to introduce a change order approver actually. Whenever you make a change, somebody has to approve it. Because remember, when you make a PO, it is basically you are spending money actually. So money spending, somebody needs to approve. Fine, that's what it is. Fine, go back on it. And then it is now for 100 quantities. Fine, go back click on it. I will not go to the search. No, fine, click on search and then go there. I will not say manage fine doc approval. So I go to the manage doc approval. This is for purchase order document. Right? Purchase order document. Manage doc approval. If I go to the manage purchasing document approval, fine, click on it. You know, going over there. In this place, what happens is we have enabled the serial. Nobody has touched it. Fortunately, fine, go there. <laughs> fine. So this is the one. Fine, click on the editor. Otherwise, we have to, we have to disable it and then bring our serial 3 into action, actually. You can choose anything, anywhere. Fine. Click on edit also. So you go there, click on it. Now, what happens? I'm not going to add a condition actually. Add a condition. No, no. I will not. What happens? Create one more condition. If I click on create new rule and then add a condition. This is an automatic approval. I click on plus. So the second rule is for what? Change order. Change order. <laughs> Change order approval. I'm going to make it now. I click on it. I'm going to take over it. I'm going to the description. And then I am not a, putting a tick mark. The tick mark means what? There is no condition at all, but we have a condition. I click on it. So if you don't, if you have a condition, don't put any tick mark. I click on it. Change order approval. I click on it. So the condition is what add condition. So the condition itself is what is change order. Is change. If you write it, what happens in between? That is the attribute. Is change order. If change order is going to be yes, no. If you have the change order, this, this is the condition. So whenever you're changing the purchase order and approved PO, you're change, making a change now. So that means what? This will now trigger actually. If I click on OK, this is not trigger. So this condition will now become valid only when an approved PO is changed actually. In that case, what happens? You go to add action and then here, what happens? You go there. I will now say approval required. And then it is going to be for a single approver. Go there, click on it, and then go there. I will not make it as a worker and go there. So here EMP2. EMP2, comma, and then P01 underscore. So if you're making a change, this guy has to approve. That is what you're saying. So in the condition is what? Whenever you make a change on the PO, on the approved PO, you make a change, the system will be creating a change order. The change order, if it is there, then this guy, this guy has to approve. And click on save. So click on. So we have one automatic approver for normal one, and then one change order approver which will be going to EMP2. The automatic is automatic actually. The first one is automatic, and then if there is a change, this will trigger actually. So normally, when you are creating hundreds of rules, everything will be enabled because everything will be firing on different different scenarios actually. So you have to write a scenario very properly. Condition writing is the real cream of a what happens approval approval mechanism where what happens you have to write a condition in a very beautiful manner. Fine. So you write, think think and then write it. And then what happens with that? I click on deploy. We are not deploying. So after save, we had to deploy it actually. And then the rule also must be enabled. Fine. Every rule, whatever you are writing, will be enabled actually. Fine. Go there. So already this is also enabled. Now you'll go to the purchase order and then make a search. Now click on it. Now go there. Click on it. <coughs> you'll go to the manage orders. And then you'll now see how many orders are there in this now. In this BU, there are only two orders. Fine. I'll remove the buyer also. And then make a search. Always have a habit about making a blank search. So make a search. Click on it. So it is not accepting it. So what you do is we'll now go to the supplier and then put it fine. P01 and then sub three. Fine, not put sub three. So sub three. So one of the parameters is the mandatory one. So one of the either order number or requisition number or supplier or buyer. Fine, click on search and fine. And I'm searching for it. So once when you search for it, there are two or two orders there. Two orders there. So one is what? 2002 is also open actually. Fine. This is also open. So I will now select it and then I'm going to edit it now. If I click on it, I'm going to edit it. Now what happens? The requester says it is not 100 quantities, but I want 150 quantities. So the requester is the ultimate authority in a P2P lifecycle. So whenever he needs it, whatever the purchase officer has to amend it actually. Because everybody provides the services to the requester. The requester is the ultimate authority because he is now, he has to run the plant. So to run the plant, what happens is he needs the material actually. So everybody has to assist him in getting the material on time actually. So it is already uploaded. You say, sir, uh, you, we want 150 now. You are going to make a change. Right? So he will now, what happens, go there. <clears throat> he will now go to the actions and then what happens, he will now click on edit. So once when you edit, it will automatically create a change order. Fine, click on edit. An approved PO, 2004, the action will now create a change order. An approved PO, when you try to edit, it will automatically create a change order. Fine, click on yes. He will now write a reason also because it will now go for auditing also. Because audit also will now come on. In our company, what happens? Whenever uh, we have any purchase orders, more than 1 lakh rupees, it has to go to internal audit for approval. Because people will now make a cheating. 
so they eat away money company's money so what happens approval the internal audit will not no contact requesting department also or requesting department gm and then sir you want really 150 fine you know say if he says yes then they will not approve it actually on a paper we will not approve we will not do not approve on the system actually <coughs> they will not he will not print the purchase order and then take it to the audit <coughs> the audit will not scrutinize and then they will not say okay go ahead and then they will not put a stamp also afterwards only they can go ahead right so for any items any purchase orders which are beyond 1 lakh in our company i was working on ispath industries mumbai because purchasing means what you are spending money so somebody has to authorize it he will not write right? so that, <coughs> requested wanted 150 quantities so he will not write a reason also so once when he reason, you know, internal audit will not have any problem so every company will have uh, different reasons for writing on the change order actually the change order going right now so you will not change it to 150 now. 150 is no change so click on it and then you will not give a save now click on save and then he has made a change now and then again validate the change click on it. So once when you give it on the lines region, it will not get what happens the default on the schedules and distributions also. I made a change the line from 100 to 150. If you go to the schedule, the schedule also will be changed to 150. And then the distributions also will be changed to 150 everywhere. So the changes made on the lines will be percolating down to schedules and distributions automatically. You need not have to do anything at all. And then go there. So click on save. Now again, manage approvals. Now the change order is undergoing approval. The change order is undergoing. Amount change is what? Plus 500. Amount change is no 500. So go there. Click on it. Manage approval. So, till the approval takes place, the original value of uh, 1000 is valid actually. It is not 1500. So, 1000 is still valid. Fine. So, once when it is approved, then only it will become 1500. Now, P0 is now gone to EMP2. Fine. Not showing you EMP2 because it is a change order approval actually. Fine. The change order. So, click on submit. It will now go to EMP2. Now, fine. Click on submit. Can now see that it will be marked to EMP2 for approval actually. Click on it. It will be marked to EMP2. So change order for the documentation was submitted for approval and click on OK. Now EMP2 will have a look at it. So click on search again and click on search again. Now you can see there won't be any what happens change of the status. If you want to receive, you can very well what happens receive the 1000, 100 quantities. You can very well receive. But the change order you can see an eye icon is there. So only when the eye icon is now what happens going away, then only what happens the new change will be affected. Otherwise, the old change is old one is always effective. Fine. They can always receive under quantities. So now the change order is approved under approval. You only have to what happens wait for what happens it becomes 150 1500. So go there. We will not go to EMP2 and then we will not get it approved. Okay, click on it. We'll not go there. The change order has to be approved now. Click on it. So you can have multiple approvals also because it's spending. Remember, money spending somebody has to authorize actually. Many companies are having so many scrutinization actually. And then in our company, we even have an internal audit which manually checks if a purchase order value is more than this, more than what happens a thousand one lakh rupees. So I go to the EMP2 fine, click on it. <clears throat> so P01 EMP2. Okay, fine. I had to because the system has not got reset actually. I'll have to go there and then you know, change the passwords. I will not know, go to the right click and then duplicate. So we had to set up the passwords. The passwords have all got changed actually. Because yesterday, I mean, they had done something. I will not go to the tools and I will not change the passwords. So go to the tools. Where is it? Tools. Tools. And then you go to the security console. And then what I was they changed all the passwords actually. So let me go there and then reset the password first. I go to the users and then I go to the P01. So EMP2 is only required now. I click on EMP2. Let me reset the password. Because yesterday they have reset the passwords. So click on manual and then go there. <clears throat> and then here automatically say welcome one two three fine go there. Welcome one two three. So click on reset password. Now passwords are not getting seen that. So the password is now reset actually. Now what happens? They go there and then you'll be able to what happens log in with this many MP2. And then click on signing. Now what happens? They can very well log in. You are not logging in. So on the right hand side top, you'll be getting a notification of click on it. So click on the bell icon. So through bell icon also, you can very well do it. Now click on bell icon. Fine, you can say action required approval by a change order. Fine, 2000 to iPhone 1 now. So sometimes what happens if the notification comes and not around, come the order. Fine, you click on the left hand side navigator and then you go to the tools and then go to the approvals. It will be either approvals or work list actually. Right? You click on the approvals. Either approvals or work list. So here also you can see this. Actually. Click on the approvals or work list. Fine, click on it. So you can now see all the things which are happening. So now you see approve, approve buyer change order approve. The buyer has now made a change order actually. So amount is what? 1000 to 1500 is the one. So you click on it, we'll now have a look at it. 
you know, going to have a look at nothing on it. So you'll not have a look at all these things now. Requested one to one fifty commodities. So you'll not see the regression. So if the uh, our approver uh, feels that okay, he will not again contact what happens uh, either Ramba or Urosi or Menaka in the requesting department. Hey, you want this extra? And you know, she will say yes, this is I really want it. So then what happens? You know, when you click on approve. Because somebody has to authorize the additional requirement actually because you are not spending more. So that is why a change order, many companies needs an approval actually. If you don't put, uh, create that and the document one, manage the document uh, approvals, no no creation, nothing will happen. I click on approval. So when you change it, what happens? It will get automatically approved actually. When a change is made, what happens? It will be getting approved. Automatic. So but normally usually what happens? You will be having a change order. So click on approval now. So go there. So it will not get approved now. Fine. So once when the approval has happened, then what happens? You cannot very well see on the main screen that what happens? It has been approved. So the approval is happening. Now. Click on it. So we are now click on the approval. Now. Nothing is happening here. We will not go to our login. We will not go to our login. I will not go to the manage purchasing document. So you will not go there. Click on it. You will not go and then query. Now. Click on it. I will not. What happens? Right click and then duplicate. Now. Manage orders. No. So if you make a search, now you can see that what happens, the IE account will go away, the amount will become 1,500, and then the change order is one actually. So the latest change order will be always been over. The IE account will go away now, the, the 2,000. And then the amount will not change to 1,500. You can search. You cannot see that. Now the icon, IE account has gone away, the amount has got changed. Now there is no change order visible, but this is only change order one actually. If you click on the hyperlink of it, now I click on the hyperlink of it. If you click on the hyperlink, it will never go to edit mode, remember. We can only view it now. And click on it. You're not going to view it. Click on the hyperlink and then we are viewing it now. <clears throat> Inside somewhere it will not show as a change order one actually. So the latest change order will be in Vogue actually. Where is the change order number? Yeah, it's not visible at all. I thought that somewhere it will be visible actually. But only one is visible actually. It may be you can even add some columns or somewhere else and then see the change order number actually. So you go there in the main line, or you go to the view, and then you go to the columns, and then see whether any change order column is there or not. So you put it there, or you can even add it. Change order column is there. You can even add it and then see it actually. So try somewhere, it will be available somewhere else. So this is on the change order approvals. You got it now, right? So we'll not change actually. So we'll not continue it to, tomorrow. Tomorrow we'll not continue on this. Clear? This is to me. Hello. <clears throat> can you open? Hello, up? sir. Yeah, yeah. Can you open up your video now? <clears throat> yeah, sure, sir. Video. Okay. okay, then yeah. Bye for now, and then we'll not meet tomorrow at 3 p.m. Okay. Bye. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. Bye, 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 bye. Have a good day, sir. Bye, bye.